We're going to conclude Chapter 6S, or the supplement to Chapter 6, uh, on statistical process control, talking about process capability. Process capability is the natural variation in a process that results from common causes. And when we look at process capability, we're really looking at two main factors. There's the specification or the tolerance limits, and then the process capability. So the specification or the tolerance limits, that's the range of acceptable values established by engineering design or customer requirements. Your LSL is the lower specification limit, and your USL is the upper specification limit. So what that means is, Earlier we talked about a bag of chips and having the right weight inside of that bag of chips. They didn't want to fill it with pounds worth of chips and they also didn't want to leave it empty worth of air. Well, I couldn't find a bag of chips downstairs, but I did find this, a little bag of Skittles. So for this company, Mars, when they are trying to make this bag of Skittles, their specification limits, this is a small one, it's a snack pack, so they probably want to have about 10 Skittles inside but their acceptable values established by the engineering design is if this bag has nine, that's okay. If this bag has 11, that's okay. That's the specification or the tolerance limits. Now process capability is the determination of whether the variability inherent in the output of that process is in control and it falls within the acceptable range of variability allowed by the design specifications. So if it falls within those specifications, then the process is capable. So if Mars, when they're making this bag of candy, if their process is outputting somewhere from 9 to 11, it meets the design specifications and therefore it is a capable process. So process capability. Process capability is the natural variation in a process that results from common causes. A process capability of greater than 1.33 indicates good capability. On the next page, I'm going to show you a, a couple of different charts. Um, one's labeled A, one's labeled B, C, and D. Well, the, the top left one, which is A, is indicates a good process. Many firms require a process capability value of 1.66 or greater, which is essentially the same tolerance range as about 10 standard deviations. For this course, our criteria is anything that's above 1.33 is a capable process. If you can get your uh, CP up to two, that would be a Six Sigma uh, level of quality. So um, that was A. So 1.33 indicates good process capability. For B, uh, when you get to one, if you have a process capability of one, that means the natural variation in that process is the same as, same as the design specification width. So in our bag of Skittles example again, that would mean the process is sometimes producing nine, sometimes producing 11. So it's barely a good process. It's meeting the design specifications, but just barely because sometimes there's nine and sometimes there's 11. And that's a little bit of design. Uh, that's, a, that's a range, right? So it's not tightened up. What they really want is 10. They're just allowing nine or 11. So when you have a process capability of one, then your natural variation is the same as your design specifications. When you have a process capability of less than one, uh, the a significant portion of the output will not conform to the specifications in your engineering design. So if, just keep using this as an example. You want between nine and 11 pieces of candy. And if you have a process capability of less than one, sometimes you're getting eight, sometimes you're getting 12, and you don't want that. What you really want is 10. You're allowing nine and 11. But if you have a process capability of less than one, it means sometimes you're getting something outside of that range from nine to 11. And then lastly, the value of CP does not depend on the mean of the process. Thus, a process may be off center, such as in D, and still show as an acceptable value for process capability. So here's where it gets a mildly confusing. I kept saying they want 10. But the process specifications or the process capability, it's okay if you have a range of two from 11 to nine. Anywhere in that range of being off by two is acceptable. Well, what the off-centered mean means is that your process is, is still um, within range. You're only um, varying by two. 
But what happens if all of a sudden you're only making five Skittles? Sometimes you make four. Sometimes you make six. Your process is capable. It's just way off of center of where you're supposed to be. So um, just the process capability doesn't always tell the whole story because they were making anywhere from four to six Skittles. And so they were your process capability was pretty good. It was still pretty tight. It was within that two Skittle range, but you were supposed to be making 10. So that's an off-centered process. Okay, so I've just explained what all four of those are conceptually. Here's what it looks like on a chart. I'll go through this rather quick because, um, again, I just explained what it was on the last slide. So A would be a process that is in control and very good. This would be when you have greater than a 1.33 process capability. Using the Skittles as an example still, this would be uh, 11 on the upper limit. This would be 9 Skittles on the lower tolerance level. And your process outputs anywhere between 9, 10, or 11 Skittles, so that process is in control. This example here would be if you made your process capability um, where there was every time uh, it was really close to the 9 or really close to the 11, uh, but there was very little margin for error. That means that process is barely capable because it has a CP of 1. But for sake of this course, 1.33 or greater is a capable process. In this example, this process is not capable. Your design specifications are here, but your process is yielding a number outside of that. So many of the uh, bags of Skittles will not fall within your design specification range. And then this is the off-centered mean, or the, or the process that um, is within the process capability, but you're way off-centered. So that's what that looks like uh, from a chart perspective. Okay, so let's learn how to calculate our process capability. The process capability is simply your upper specification limit minus your lower specification limit divided by 6 multiplied by the standard deviation of the process. Okay, 6 uh, your standard deviation of the process. And once again, anything over 1.33 is a capable process. So here's an example. Your sigma is 3.05. Your upper specification limit is 32. Your lower specification limit is 28. So there is your formula. You will just simply plug in those numbers and you will get 32 minus 28 over 6 multiplied by 3.05. And when you divide 4 by 6 multiplied by 3.05, which is 18 or so, you're going to get a process capability of 0.2185. So is that a good process? No, it's a terrible process. Um, 1 is barely capable. 1.33 means you have relatively good process capability. This one is 0.2185, this process stinks. It is not a capable process. It means that a lot of your outputs are not falling within your design specification. So now let's calculate our off-centered um, process, which is the CPK. This shows how well the parts being produced fit into the range specified by the design specifications. So your formula for the off-centered process equals the minimum of either your lower specification limit calculation or your upper specification limit, okay? And for those, you're gonna take the mean of the performance, uh, the mean performance of the process, so your X bar, minus your lower specification limit divided by three, and then your standard deviation of the process, or the same formula using your upper specification limit, and that will help us to determine what the CPK is. So let's do an example for that. So suppose that a specification calls for a lower specification limit of 2 and an upper specification limit of 6. A sample of 100 parts found there's an X bar of 4.5 and a sigma of 0.5. Calculate the CP and the CPK and evaluate if this process is capable or not. So everything you see on the screen was given to you. Now you just plug in the numbers provided to determine your process capability. So 6 minus 2 over 6 multiplied by your sigma gives you 1.33. So if I wouldn't have given you the X bar and I just asked you to calculate the process capability, you would be done. 
and you would say this process is capable because it came up to a 1.33. But I gave you more information. I gave you the X bar. I gave you the mean of 4.5. So we can calculate the CPK to see if it's off center or not. So our next step is to calculate the lower and upper limits. So we would just simply plug in the X bar minus the lower specification limit, which is 4.5 minus 2 over 3 multiplied by your sigma of 0.5, and that gives you a 1.667. So we still think the process is capable, but we're not done. We've got one more step. So now you'll do your upper specification limit. When you plug in those numbers using a 6 for the upper limit, you get a process capability of 1.0, which means that this process is not capable because if we go back to the last slide, to see if your process is off-centered, you're taking the min of your upper specification limit or your lower specification limit. You're taking the minimum. So don't go too fast when you're calculating these and stop at 1.33 process capability or 1.67 for your CPK. If I were to ask if this process is in control and what is the process capability, your correct answer is 1.0 and that it's not a capable process because even though the process is within range of the design specifications, it's off center. Okay, and that concludes this video on process capability and it also concludes uh, the supplement to chapter six on quality management and statistical process control.